again, we have the airplanes in Vietnam, 1970, 71, 14 months over there. And there was nine of them, the 11 built, there was nine of them that we took over. And I'll explain more about that later. And uh, we formed the Quiet Aircraft Association in 2004. That's all the Lockheed, it was, a, it was a, you know, a secret airplane when we left. And we all signed stuff that was secret. So uh, we lost contact with each other. The internet's a wonderful thing. In 2004, the Lockheed folks, the Army, Army folks, and uh, other people, the QT folks, and the, that's a prototype airplane. We got started getting together and finding each other and getting the information together on these airplanes. Uh, and uh, that's where we are at. So it says, we want to ask the question is why a YO3A silent airplane? And I don't know if anybody saw the video upstairs by the airplane up in there. But basically, the night belonged to the enemy. And uh, you can see in the daytime, uh, it's pretty easy to spot stuff. But you get, you get night and can't see much. You know, that cap turns outside, you can't, you can't really see. You can't tell what you're really looking at and what you're dealing with. So the, the things we have, uh, the military has, most everything they've got, it makes a lot of noise. And you've got, you've got stuff like helicopters. You can hear a helicopter for miles off, and especially uh, at night. Uh, so if you're the bad guy and you hear them coming in your direction, you can take evasive action, turn off the lights on your boat, hit to the side of the thing, get under a canopy someplace, and just stop all movement, and they can't, they can't find you. You also have things like the bird dog, was a, uh, that was a, uh, a daytime spotter airplane. They did try to do some nighttime spotting with it, but again, you couldn't find anything. Once they spotted the guys, that was, that was history on the thing. Uh, on the river, you had the, uh, the, is that the boat? No, it's a tank. Tanks, any tanks, and they basically, I don't know if they ran them at night or not, uh, but let's see. But then you have the, the boats going down the river. And of course, the boats go down the river, they make noise. Everything makes noise. So the idea is this, is that uh, some guys, Stan Hall and a few other guys, uh, got together for Lockheed and decided, hey, what are we going to do? We need a, an airplane that basically is as quiet as a hawk and can see in the night. And uh, You've got to solve a problem. To make an airplane quiet, you've got to solve uh, three basic problems. Actually, there's more problems than this, but I'll show you. You've got a, you've got a that propeller that probably makes the most noise on any airplane. And that's, you've, got to, you've got to get rid of that noise. You've got to get rid of the second noise, which is the engine and the exhaust system. Basically, the exhaust system on an airplane. And you can go out here and hear all that noise off, off that airplane. The third thing is that the airframe, but just an airframe like that, and if you've ever seen an airplane come in with just the the propeller freewheeling, and it comes come in. You can hear you can hear whistles and other untoward noises on that coming off that airplane. Okay, so what we have is we have Lockheed Missiles and Space Company with Sunnyvale. Uh, they came in and jumped in. They decided we're going to we're going to uh, come up with a, a, a silent airplane. And the first plane they come up with is a QT2. Now this the uh, fellow named Les Horn. It's less on the right, right there. It's a fellow gentleman in the front here with him. And then the other pilot, I forgot his name at this moment. But uh, this airplane was basically, uh, it was a Schweizer SGS 232 glider. And what they did is they, uh, they put a pylon in the front, put a shaft, put a small engine in the back, and they quieted it with a Buick muffler. And uh, the thing is very, very slow flying. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, I'm not even, probably 62 knots, something like that. And uh, it would fly very, very low. And on an airplane, you understand one thing about an airplane, the more, the faster you want to make it, the more energy it puts out. The more energy it puts out, the louder that it, it can be. Okay, and let me see, did I miss that one where they had the, okay. The, the, the scene in the night with this airplane, they had the old, old uh, handheld Starlight scope, first generation, and uh, they could, uh, they could fly over, and they're flying low like that, and they could they could see see really they could see really good, and they could spot people and not be not be hurt. In fact, uh, the the uh, two months of tests they were over there initially with this airplane, uh, they only took one round, and it was because they had turned on the landing lights before they got to the runway. And uh, I know I'm not going to talk to you yet. So uh, we got it proved so successful. The Army and uh, DARPA and those guys decided, let's, let's go ahead with a, a production airplane on the thing. 
There's a plane called the, this is the Q Star, and it's basically your Schweizer glider. The tail's a little bit bigger, and you've got the pylon in the front. Now, this is a Cor uh, Corvair, uh, uh, Corvair radiator, Corvair, ra Corvair radiator, and uh, they tried all different kinds of propeller configurations um, and uh, that, that sort of a thing uh, to get it as quiet as possible. And then they realized that, that it had to be, Army wanted something more. They really wanted something. And so what they did is they built and uh, designed and built in a very short period of time. Uh, these rolled off the line in 1969. And you had 11 of these uh, YO3As out there. And you notice they all have six-bladed props on them. And uh, they're, they were all assembled in this hangar that's disappearing over here at Mahu. I don't know if anybody knows, seen that place, but they had all, in fact, we left out of here to Vietnam with the airplanes from this particular location. The, okay, and to see in the night, what they did, and upstairs, if you go upstairs, you'll see the, the night vision aerial periscope, second generation. This actually turns around. The sensor operator sat in the front, and there's a, for you young guys up there, there's a joystick next to it, and you can, you can turn that gimbal and have it go around, and they can see at night oh, through that thing. Start, if, they don't, if they need more light on the tail of it, they have, like uh, it's like a big flashlight, infrared illuminator. And what it does is that when they're looking at this, that coordinates with the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the night vision stuff, and then they can track what's going on the ground. Now, what they found in, in Vietnam is they used different kinds of ordnance. They would find it. Okay, they see something, get identified, and they, any ordinance was available to come in. Helicopters, Navy, anything, come on it, put them into this. When we first went over there, surprisingly, the Army really did, our military really didn't understand what to do with these airplanes. Uh, it had a, uh, a latest target designator in the, in, the, in the front, so some of our missions were kind of, kind of strange, just go out and look for something. That was, that was sort of what the thing was. Later on is, uh, all of us began to understand what the airplane could do. They started down in the Delta, which is down in the south part of South Vietnam. They started working with a hunter killer team with the infant gunships. And the, and the helicopter would sit on the, on the pads waiting for the Y-03A to spot a target. And so when the Y-03A found that target, uh, it would hover over the target and call that helicopter in. Now, of course, when the helicopter starts coming over, and to get the bad guys, well, the bad guys turn off their lights or whatever it is and hide in the bushes. But it's too late because the wild 3 a now has got this thing, this light here, that infrared illuminator, painting the target. And the infant gunship has equipment on it that can read what they're painting. So then they just shoot, whatever, shoot that area up. And uh, of course, it's all at night. And uh, one of the, one of the problems with the wild 3 a and proving and make proof of concept on the thing, but. Uh, the, v, the, VX, the VC at night were very good about taking their dead, dead away after an action. So if you went out in the daytime to find out how much damage is done, it was very difficult to assess. But we, we uh, this airplane was involved in locating and helping destroy the largest Russian trawler uh, uh, off, off the coast of uh, South Vietnam. Let me move quickly. Okay. So we have a wild 3 a silent airplane. This is actually a picture of the one that's hanging up here in the museum. Every one of these airplanes were, were painted uh, free, freehand. They had a general idea. And you can identify, if you, don't have, if you can't see the tail number, we've worked out a system where we can identify what airplane it is by the, by the camel on the airplane, which is kind of a fun thing to do. Um, I don't know if they got the camel on that airplane right up there, but I'll find out. I'm gonna look. <laughs> This is also, this is, uh, um, um, okay, this is taking over uh, Vietnam, and this is when they put the three-bladed prop on the thing. And let me explain why they went with a three-bladed prop. That six-bladed prop, you had to have a one-mile runway to, to get off. The airplane goes real, real slow. It just kind of moseys along, kind of comes up off the tail dragger, and, it, and finally takes off, and it goes about 70, four knots or something like that. And then when they get to the target area, they'll slow that airplane down at just above stall speed. Again, you want the least amount of energy. You want that prop just barely going around and it makes you really, really quiet. The three-bladed prop made the plane a little bit more noisier, but it made it 
uh, so you could get off the runway a lot quicker, at, uh, and you could also get to the target area a little quicker too on that, with that thing. So how is the noise problem solved? Okay, remember the, real quickly the propeller and the engine and the airframe? Well, here's what they did. Here's that big, giant, six-bladed propeller they have on the thing. It turns at 800 RPM. That's really slow. You can almost see it go around on the thing. I think you'll get to a test of that. Um, this was a uh, famous prop maker, a guy named Ole Phelan. I don't know if anybody is into aviation, but wooden prop makers, he's probably, he's probably the world premier prop maker of all time. And he was a lot of props that went on stuff like that. But very, the guy had a, had a knack for figuring out how to make something just right for the airplane. The uh, second thing you've got to do with an airplane, and okay, this is it. This is uh, I took this when I was sitting in the front seat in the daytime going down the coast. But you can see my camera. You can see the the blades out there. And actually, you know that was pretty good. You know, it's, you, 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 you get, it's real slow airplane. Real slow. You can imagine 57 foot wingspan. It just kind of glides along out there, but it's not gliding. It's good. It's actually going. So, all right. So what they got another thing what they do is that. Uh, to reduce the, the speed of the propeller, instead of using gears, they use what we call rubber bands. We, that's what we call them, but they were radiators, <laughs> mass radiator belts. And uh, I tell you, they were a bitch to change because they would, they, they, if one of them turned, you had to replace them all. And uh, we had some of the airplanes, it was funny, some of our airplanes over there, we changed the belts out, and for four months, five months, nothing had happened. Some of the airplanes, we changed them out, it seems like every Every two weeks we were having to replace them. So uh, again, these are a little bit, this is a, a limited production airplane. So they're a little bit like uh, European cars in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, now we gotta get rid of the noise on the airplane. This is an asymmetrical airplane. And what makes it asymmetrical is the muffler comes out and runs the entire length, uh, the exhaust system runs the entire length of the airplane. When you go upstairs and take a look at it, you'll you'll see you'll see that. And this is just a schematic drawing. Uh, the young guys can see this. The engine would be here. Here's your two collectors. There's your prop. You run over here, and right over the top of the wings is your, is your exhaust pipe. It runs into this muffler. And uh, there was a famous guy named Brent Silver who saved this program by uh, putting uh, designing out this piccolo tube that goes in the back. Now over the muffler and the piccolo tube goes this. Um, goes this um, uh, cowling, and it's also acoustic and it helps reduce any kind of noise. It also has a lot of fiberglass in it too. Um, one of the reasons that the, the exhaust pipe runs over the top of the wing, and I got this from uh, Sherman Seltzer, one of the chief engineers in the airplane, was that they were concerned that they were developing in that time heat seeking you know, ground, air to ground missiles that could be carried. So they thought, well, let's, think, let's, let's let most of that heat come off the, over the top of the wing there. Uh, so nobody on the ground is spotted. Okay, here's another real fine picture of this airplane. And this is 008, and again, um, you've got your cowling baffling all over the engine there. Very smooth airframe. Exhaust pipe over the top, and then out the back right here would come whatever exhaust is left on the thing. And I tell you, it would just make a little like this, and it was it wasn't even warm. I'm just barely warm. Well, just you know, off the back of the thing. It looks like maybe the pilot's in the back. Oh yeah, the the pilot does sit in the back of this airplane, and this is a good thing. You have the sensor operator sitting in the front, which is the reverse of the prototype airplane where they have a switch. The uh, and again, there is your night vision aerial periscope and he's got it's a it's a monocular not a binocular type of system and you've got the uh, the pilot sitting in the back um, all of the all of the observers that come out of the, the Mohawk the sensor equipment school Let's see that is it your beats got you damn <laughs> Technically. Is there an engineer in the house? Is there an engineer in the house? I'm the engineer. I'll put my glasses on. And what I'm doing, let me see if I get the 